Welcome back. We were discussing picky eaters. So in this video, we'll be discussing the causes. What are the causes? Why the child is behaving in a particular way? See, the causes can be either from the child or from the parents. So we'll be discussing them under these two subheads. First, we'll be discussing the problems on the side of the child. If there is something wrong with the behavior of the child, so some children will just avoid the food. Some children give some visceral reactions that is gagging or spitting or not swallowing. Some avoid touching the food because it has a certain texture to it which they don't like. In some cases, it's neophobia. Neophobia is a phobia or a fear to something that's new. It can be different food or your child's just reaction to anything that you introduce new in their life, not just food. So also the reaction to something new is different. And every child is different. Some children love new reactions. They love exploring. Whereas some children prefer comfortable and predictability. So they apply this thing to their diet as well. There is also a link between picky eaters and foods being introduced later in life. So the earlier you introduce a certain food, there is a higher probability that your child will accept it. At Eduma, we have made another course on baby led weaning, which you should see and understand how to actually develop a base on food eating so that the child does not become a picky eater by the time they start walking. Picky eaters develop some reactions to a certain food. For example, you gave your child kale and the child did not like the taste in the first go. They develop a certain reaction, the child spit it out. The next time you give kale, the child will remember, oh, I spit it out the first time, I didn't like it. So there is a negative image of kale in the child's mind. That is hard to change because the brain has developed a negative image. And every time the child sees a kale, she'll be like, no, I'm not eating that because that is not a good taste. It makes me spit. Research says that the later the foods are introduced, the more problematic it becomes. So there is a certain right time to introduce certain foods in the baby's life. Please be careful of that to introduce certain right amount of foods. Sometimes it's not about diet. Some children are temperamental. They have a certain temperament. They can be sensitive. They might be crying easily or whatever. This also becomes an issue because the child just melts away the second their comfort of food is taken away and they're introduced to something new. So that's another issue. So these were some child related problems. Now we'll be discussing the problems related to the parents. Please, there can be more than one causes to it. It can be a combination, it can be one, it can be two things. It's better to understand where you are at fault and correct yourself at this stage rather than regretting later. The first thing is you do not say no to junk food. It's okay to eat junk food. Everybody eats junk food. We eat it. It's fine. No, it's not. Your child is growing. The, her cells are literally multiplying at a way faster rate than yours ever will now. So please understand, do not give junk. Some parents do feel that it's okay to give junk once in a while, like once a day, once a week. What's the harm? The harm is there. That food is addictive. It has been designed in such a way, the recipes are as such that it has to be made addictive. And that's why we all eat loving it. But please, do not do that to your child. Sometimes I've seen parents giving food as rewards like ice creams or chocolates, toffees to their kids when they do something good. So obviously, after you give chocolate or ice cream to your child, how do you expect them to eat a broccoli? Ask yourself, do you do that? No. Then why will the child do it? They will not. Another cause is parents give so much to eat to their child. The amount has to be decided by the child. The, the child is not going to overeat or undereat at this point. Please understand, giving any food in excess is not a boon, it's a bane. Another cause is when the parents cook different food for their kids and different for their family. Isn't the child a part of your family? Yes, right? Why would she eat different foods? Why do they eat at a different time? That should not happen. That's the wrong practice. Please do not promote it. Another issue is when your child is growing, they're becoming independent. She wants to take her own decisions. She's so excited to take decisions that she can eat and choose whatever she wants. 
obviously that is a good habit but obviously at this stage you should guide them also that how to go about what to eat what not to eat for example you just don't give an order to your child eat a carrot no you give them an option do you want to eat carrots or green beans so by this the child is satisfied that yes i get to choose my food and you're satisfied that oh my child is eating another big reason is your child is not getting enough exercise if you do not exercise you do not move around you won't feel hungry same is with your child they won't feel hungry if they don't move around if your child is on the tab playing games playing video games at the home just sitting around they will not feel hungry and when the child is not going to feel hungry how will they eat and then you put the label of picky eaters on them that's not fair sometimes there can be some food irritants in the diet that makes the child picky eater usually zinc or iron deficiency decreases the sensory ability for example when we eat something we taste the food our tongues have taste buds that make us feel the food but that will not happen in case of zinc or iron deficiency in your child and that will be a major issue because the child cannot taste the food if the child cannot taste the food she will not eat it it's as simple as that another major cause is food allergies a lot of parents do not recognize that their children might be allergic to certain foods so i will be giving out some signs to look out for in your child when they have allergies poor growth poor focus in everything that they do excess crying meltdowns constipation smelly breath diarrhea sleeplessness rashes skin infections extreme stomach pain one way to recognize the stomach pain is press the child's stomach if she is making a face then yes it is a problem your child can be lactose intolerant or have worms hence deworming at the right age is very very important please ensure that you do that else the nutrients that are going into your child's body will not get absorbed another problem is nutrient deficiencies we discussed about iron or zinc deficiency that affects the taste buds of the child another important is magnesium deficiency that causes mood swings the child just melts down they get cranky that's another issue if your family is vegetarian you should look out for b12 deficiencies because they they are very prevalent in vegetarians another issue is food pocketing food pocketing is nothing just when the child just keeps the food in their mouth and does not swallow it that's a way of playing or their way of uh, time pass but the child is not the problem the problem is you in that case because you did not introduce the right food at the right time when the child was growing so now they're lazy their mouth just doesn't want to swallow anything so they just keep it in their mouth they're having a good time pass about it they have something to play with so that's okay they are going to continue doing that another major cause of picky eaters is mindless eating it's extremely prevalent nowadays the child is watching the tv they just grab the pack of chips and just keeps on eating that or some juice keeps on drinking why because the tv is on or she's on a tab or she's playing games in the phone so she'll just keep on eating this is called mindless eating where you're not applying the mind just eating and eating it's not just among kids many adults are guilty of that too parents there could be more than one causes to the picky eaters obviously if your child is behaving in a certain way you have to scratch the surface and find it yourself in the next video we'll be discussing what are the side effects what actually happens right now 10 years later 20 years later we'll see about that thank you